Hello everybody, welcome to Blue Marble Science. This is pseudoscience at its finest, brought to you by the Sleeping Warrior. You're about to witness one of the most hilarious examples of scientific illiteracy you'll ever see. The Sleeping Warrior is at it again, and he's going to demonstrate that he has absolutely no understanding of anything related to physics or chemistry or uh, pretty much anything else, I guess. Warning! This video poses an extreme risk of facial injury and monitor damage. So get out those oven mitts. I recommend at least two sets. Move the monitor back out of punching range. And Gladys, are you ready? <coughs> Let's light this dumpster fire and have some fun. Anthony is going to start out this goat roping contest by saying, can we use relative density disequilibrium, just read that as word salad of the day du jour, to actually do something. Y'all grab a beer and watch this. Okay, so further to recent videos, we decided that what we would try and do is test directly whether or not the so-called force, that's not really a force, but you can think of it as a force, known as gravity, whether we could test whether or not we could use the relative density disequilibrium to overcome the so-called force of gravity and not just gravity mass on top of gravity sleeping warrior did this demonstration in a previous video what he's going to do is burn some magnesium in that flask and then somehow try to claim that a change in density causes the syringe and weight to move well there is a slight change in density but the main change is the change in uh, pressure in the flask because you're using up the oxygen and forming uh, magnesium oxide. So let's uh, watch what he does and we'll get back together in a minute. Obviously for the avoidance of any doubt whatsoever, this content is completely and utterly my own, Sean Hufford. All right, so we've got some weights on a, a weight spindle and... When the camera finishes playing around with its focal point, um, we've attached it to the underside of the vertical syringe. And what we're going to try and do is see how much pressure or how much force or whatever word it is, is required to, to how much, how much energy can we get out of this different, this diff, the pressure, dis, how much energy can we get out of the density disequilibrium, um, the relative density disequilibrium. <laughs> How much energy can we get out of relative density disequilibrium? I've got a couple of questions. What the hell is relative density disequilibrium in the first place? And secondly, how much energy do you think density has in it to begin with? You know, I would call this pseudoscience, but it, it, it's, it, it, you can't even call it that. This is nothing but word salad gibberish. Because if gravity is this thing, this force... And we're able to overcome this. And let's, let's not forget this gravitational force that isn't really a force, but you can think of it as a force, only relates to a 50 millionth of the weight of the mass. Now, this is something Sleeping Warrior doesn't give up on. He is determined to intentionally misrepresent what Cavendish actually said in his experiment. I did a video on this, and if you want to see all the details, I'll leave a link in the description to that video. But essentially, Cavendish was trying to point out to his readers how sensitive the measurement had to be when you're talking about two small masses. Sleeping Warrior. Gravitational acceleration applies to 100% of the mass of an object, not 150 millionth of it. You're intentionally misrepresenting this. Right, so the mass that's attached at the bottom is affected by one fifty millionth of its weight. That's the force of attraction between the Earth, right? That's not even a force. But we're begging the question for you morons. So what we're doing is we're demonstrating <clears throat> um, whether or not this so-called force can actually do anything and how strong is it. Because if we can lift some weights with it, then it's a bit of an issue because not only is it moving, causing a movement, we can actually utilise it to prove that we can do something with it. And if we can do something with it on top of it being a movement... There's no way that you can argue against this. this. You've got to be a science denier to be able to to argue against this. Okay, so 
And basically, vertical tube or vertical syringe with weights on it, deliberately testing how strong the, this uh, force is. So now what we do is we get it to settle. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to use the um, magnesium on fire and then put the bung back in and we're going to see what, basically, what can we do with this? It's not okay to deny the science that's on play here. It is not my fault that we are demonstrating something that you guys refuse to accept is true. The reason why the cherry tomato is displaced is because of this. The reason why the egg moved in my salt experiment is because of this. This relative density disequilibrium is the cause. It is a cause in movement. It isn't my fault. You don't have to like it, but you do have to accept it. Gravity is not a force, but you can think of it as a force. Well, relative density is a force, and you must accept it as a force, even though the current science tells you that it's not. And for those that say that density is just a scalar, they're correct. I'm not referring to density, I'm referring to relative density, and specifically disequilibrium, because we know that that is a force. So now the bung gets put onto the top of the, top of the thing. Look! How is that not considered to be anything other than fantastic? We caused it, right? We've burnt the oxygen that's inside the, the, the conical flask. And I, to be honest, when, when we first did this, I thought that it was going to push the uh, syringe out, not pull it in. So it means that the exothermic reaction of the magnesium is less than the uh, effect of burning the oxygen that's inside the conical flask. But nonetheless, we can lift a weight and let's remember that the gravitational effect is only one fifty millionth. So we've definitely overcome the effect of gravity, haven't we, boys and girls? And we are demonstrating that with a little bit of thought and quite a lot of equipment, we can demonstrate that relative density, specifically the disequilibrium bit, does cause movement. The egg did move because of this. The cherry tomato will move because of that. So in the context of the bigger picture, everybody that questions why is it that the things move if it's not gravity or buoyancy, the answer is this is proof that it is the relative density disequilibrium that's doing it. And we know that because scientific method states that the independent variable is the presumed cause and when we manipulate it, if it gives you the effect that you believe that you're seeing, then the cause and effect relationship is established. No, Anthony, what we just learned is you have no idea how to use or apply the scientific method. What we just learned is you completely ignored a major change in gas pressure in that flask in preference for a pseudoscience made-up term that you just pulled out of thin air. That's what we just learned. Let's not forget that the removal of the bung allows that um, disequilibrium to become equalized again. I hope you enjoyed this video. It took a bit of time, thought, consideration. But relative density, disequilibrium cannot be ignored any longer. Stop denying the science. We're demonstrating that we can prove why the egg moves. It's nothing to do with gravity. When he burns magnesium in air, the preferential reaction is with oxygen. And you form magnesium oxide. You can also form uh, uh, magnesium nitride, but we'll assume he got the stoichiometry just exactly right. So air is 78% nitrogen, it's actually 21% oxygen, and 1% other stuff like argon, CO2, hydrogen, helium, etc., etc., so for the purpose of a simple calculation, I'm just going to add that 1% to the oxygen fraction. And we can calculate the uh, density in terms of grams per mole for air to be 28.9. Nitrogen alone would be 28.014. That's about 3% less. The gas density, when you burn uh, magnesium, will decrease by about 3%, but the volume will decrease by 21%. Now here I'm using the, the true percentage of uh, O2 in the atmosphere. The plunger moves up because the pressure in the flask is reduced from 
to about 11 and a half pounds per square inch. The plunger in a 100cc syringe is 35 millimeters in diameter. That's about one and a half inches. So the pressure in the plunger can be calculated and that would have been about 4.8 pounds. That's more than enough to lift the little weight that he had connected to it. The plunger moves up because of the change in pressure, nothing else. Relative density, disequilibrium, what? No, pressure differential. Let's talk about some of Anthony's recent follies. He floated an egg in salt water claiming Archimedes' principle was solely a result of specific gravity while ignoring gravity. That's simply pseudoscience. He has repeatedly misrepresented gravity as one fifty millionth of an object's weight when in fact 100% of its weight is due to gravity. Again, that's pseudoscience. Now he creates a simple chemical reaction that reduces the quantity of gas in a sealed container by 21%, thereby lowering the pressure in the container by 21%, and tries to somehow tie that to some magical form of density. Good Lord. That's witchcraft. Anthony, just stop, okay? <laughs> really. Well, Gladys and I hope your monitor and your face survived okay. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Gladys, uh -huh. we're out of here.